What I'm holding here is technically a duvet, and I'll tell you why. This is Liz from Comfort Sleep Sanctuary. By the end of this video, you'll know the difference between a comforter and a duvet, and you can make up your mind on how you want to make your bed. For more information, you can always check the links in the description below or go to our website, ComfortSleepSanctuary.com. This is probably not a typical duvet, but it's what I had on hand. A true duvet must be used with a duvet cover. In other words, it's just the stuffing. This particular example I purchased many, many years ago when I was traveling in China. It's actually stuffed with silk, which you can see kind of right here. At the same time, I purchased a lovely duvet cover, but it's almost too nice to use. Today, if you were to purchase a duvet, what you're really getting is a comforter. A comforter is completely ready to use as is. It has a cover and it's stuffed and it has stitching that holds the stuffing to the comforter. If it's stuffed with something loose like down or even weights, the stitching also helps keep everything evenly distributed. The cover is usually made of a cotton polyester blend, almost identical to your sheets. Or if you're like me and hate cotton, you can go with lyosol or bamboo or linen or even silk. Like the duvet, the stuffing can be anything. Usually it's a polyester fill, which is just fine for most purposes, and it's also the most cost effective. If you live in a cold climate, you can get a comforter stuffed with down or feathers. But be aware, if you go that route, down is the soft, insulating feathers of the underbelly of the goose or sometimes duck, whereas feathers are the rough outer feathers and they usually have little pokey quills. And things sold as down usually have a mix of both true down and feathers, sometimes as much as 95% feathers. And usually the price is the giveaway. So if the price is a little too good to be true, check the label because it might be mostly feathers. For me, down is far too hot. And obviously many of us would prefer not to use animal products. Totally fine, either way. In addition to polyester stuffing, there is also stuffing made of lyosol, bamboo, wool, and as you saw earlier, even silk. These fills are great if you tend to get hot, like I do. Unlike cotton, they absorb the moisture and wick it away from your body, which ends up keeping you cool. Yes, even the wool can keep you cool. Most comforters come in a limited color palette. I hope you like white. If white is not your thing, there are plenty of duvet covers to cover up your comforter in any material or pattern or cloth that you like. Again, I'm partial to lyocell, bamboo, linen, and silk. Most comforters come with these little hidden tabs at the corner so that you can attach a duvet cover if you wish or not. If your comforter doesn't come with tabs or your duvet cover doesn't come with ties to attach to the tabs, you can use a small safety pin. However, I would caution you if you're pinning to make sure you pin through at least four layers of fabric, usually in the seam. This way you're not going to rip the thing accidentally. So if you have a duvet, what you really have is a comforter in a duvet cover. So the question isn't whether you should have a duvet or a comforter. The question is really, should you put your comforter in a cover or just leave it as is. What are the pros and cons of adding a duvet cover? Well, number one, it protects the comforter. This is especially important if you have little furry friends who like to knead on the comforter and do a little claw damage. I'm not naming names. Number two, you can wash the duvet cover separately. This is especially important if you have a comforter that is way too large to fit in your washing machine, which I don't recommend buying, or if it's made of something that you don't particularly want to wash, like silk or wool. Also, with a duvet cover, you can change your look as often as you like. Change the look in spring, summer, winter. 
Because the duvet cover is usually made of the same material as your sheets, you have the option of ditching your top sheet and sleeping directly under the duvet covered comforter. This is actually very popular in Europe. Downside, of course, is now you, your skin is directly touching the duvet cover, which means you now need to launder the duvet cover just as you would your sheets, and just as often. So what are the cons? Well, obviously this is one more piece of bedding that you actually don't really need, that you now have to deal with. The biggest issue by far is getting that sucker on and off. And again, if you've ditched your top sheet, you need to do this every laundry day there is an easy way of getting it on and off. You may have heard of the California roll or the burrito method or the Tootsie roll. It has a lot of different names. FYI, California roll doesn't refer to California. It refers to the sushi roll. I tried this method. There will be a link at the end of this video. It's a little harder than it looks. Multiple takes were involved. And you'll note that Serafina had a starring role. She helped. Another issue, even though the cover is attached to the comforter at the corners, it still tends to slide around in there. There's not that stitching that holds it all into place. So when you're making your bed, you've got to smooth everything out again, which takes a little bit more time. If you aren't critical about looks, just throw this on your bed and be done with it. I mentioned that these bedding terms tend to be used interchangeably. Here's a quick quiz. Is this a comforter or a blanket? It's actually sold as a quote unquote blanket. Obviously it looks like a comforter. It's made like a comforter. It has an outer cover. It's stuffed and it has stitching, but it's significantly thinner than your average comforter. In this case, it's simply a marketing term. Most blankets look like this or this. They're usually one thick material made of polyester, cotton, wool, lyocell, and all the other fibers we've mentioned so far. The advantage is blankets are thinner so you can layer them on as you like and take them off as you get hot. Again, if you're not critical about the looks, you can just leave a blanket as the top layer. That's your bedspread. Another advantage is most blankets are washable and because they're thinner, they will actually fit in your washing machine. Whereas a single comforter may or may not fit. What about a quilt? Think of a quilt as the precursor to the comforter. Like the comforter, you have a cover, usually made of cotton, and then you have some type of stuffing or batting. Again, traditionally that was cotton or wool, and now it can be any fiber such as polyester or bamboo. And then the quilt is very famous for the stitching that would now keep the layers together. This is very similar to the stitching on comforters that we see that keep the stuffing together. This is obviously a quilt and this and this, but so is this. Most things that are marketed as quilts are significantly thinner than a comforter or even a blanket. Some of those quilts are intended to be decorative, but they do offer a little bit of insulation, especially if you sleep hot. If you need more insulation, put more blankets underneath. Now you know the difference between a duvet, a comforter, a blanket, and a quilt. Which do you prefer? Do you use a duvet cover or do you prefer your comforter to be naked? Comment below. And if you are one of those people that uses a duvet cover, what method do you use to put your duvet cover on and off? And how do you keep it lying flat? That's the issue I'm working on. If you'd like to learn more, check the links in the description below. And as always, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Nighty night. Mm -hmm.